the virtuous lifestyle <coughs> virtue. And today's video is going to be about summer. Things that I think, because people keep asking me, oh my gosh, Virgie, what should I do this summer? I'm like, mm. And so I thought I'd make a video on things I think you should, could, would, maybe, mm, do over the summer to help you prepare for uni, prepare for engineering, prepare for your degree. And so if that's something that you want to watch, then cue the intro, which I now have. Lego. Oh la la. <laughs> first things first, I'm gonna eat your no, I'm doing. Okay, first things first. Here's a little disclaimer. You do not have to do any of this to do well at university or your degree. This is purely things I think after doing two years of civil engineering and do two years of university I think you could do before summer to help you in first or second year but like by all means I didn't do any of this clearly because I'm making them now and talking to my past self but for the overachievers and people who want to go that extra mile then I have a list for you. I'll start with the generic uni stuff and then I'll dabble into the engineering stuff. Obviously this is an easy one. You want to start buying stuff for uni and your house or your flat or your student accommodation earlier than usual because things do tend to run out and like some some like I bought my stuff earlier but there were certain things I said I'll wait to buy at uni I shouldn't have done that because when I waited to buy at uni they were all sold out and I ended up say I, I said I'll buy my kitchenware there it was so damn expensive I should have just bought it at my big Wilco at home in London instead of like checking all the way to Southampton and then seeing like the spoon was four pounds and I knew I could get a wooden spoon for 50p at Wilkinson anyways it's just those small things like that Prepare yourself and also make a list. It's so much better to come to like IKEA, Costco, or whatever like massive wholesalers you're gonna shop your uni stuff at with a list. Unless you're gonna end up spending like hundreds and hundreds of pounds. And trust me, uni stuff isn't cheap. You think, oh, let me just budget it. You do need it, but like just spend your money wisely. Okay? So you make a list. You want to start applying to accommodation, but by the time this video goes out, you should probably already start like looking for like you should already have finished your accommodation application but it's never too late I would say first year stay in student accounts and then second year listen second year that will have um, I think second year you should do housing have that housing experience and then third year if you didn't like living in a house move back to private accommodation and if you did um, extend your contract I did but like housing is a whole different topic and I'll talk about that later bear in mind I didn't do I didn't actually do any of this before I started my engineering degree but now that I've done two years, I feel like certain things you could actually do to help you. So first one is like, review your A-levels, whether that's maths, A-level maths, further maths, physics, geography, chemistry. I'd say review the key ones, like further maths and maths. When I tell you, it comes up straight away. And the funny thing is, I started the first year, first week we got the introduction, we got the massive fat textbook that we're going to use for the whole first year because in uh, Southampton, first year self-taught maths. And when I tell you I could not remember vectors, I didn't know who she was, I didn't know who that is, I was like, do I even know you? And the fact that I just could not remember vectors to save my life. No, I could remember, but I just couldn't remember how you do stuff with it, like division, multiplication, all that. I was just like, what? And then matrices. If I just reviewed a little bit of my chapter of like C1, C2, or whatever chapter came up in A-level maths, it would have helped me loads because it took me a week and a bit to just re get get my brain back into that you know you want to start thinking about your degree da, 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 da. and the issue is now is that you people who are going to go to uni will have some fat gap like in the six month kind of like covid and miss rona um you're gonna have six month period and if you don't work your brain a little bit i'm not saying that come on summer's your time to like enjoy enjoy your summer but i'm telling you if you're gonna use <laughs> you're gonna spend six months with no like sort of like brain activity or like something that doesn't enrich your brain and like whatever you're gonna forget everything like you know you, period you will forget things all right and it's just gonna be so much harder and then you're just gonna do loads of catching up so you might as well use a teeny bit of your summer to catch up on like the important subject like a-level maths and third maths if you did it because that comes up low. another thing i would suggest over the summer is really build your passion for your degree. Whether that's in archaeology, your architecture, an engineer, designer, philosopher, this, that, that. 
build up the passion. That's if you have a passion. Some people fully do not care about the degrees, and that is okay. No tea, no shade, just sweet lemonade. But if you if you really want to get scholarships and internships, they want to see that passion, okay? Especially if you apply for it before university, before you even have some kind of concrete like um, university grade to show them, they're just gonna base on your A levels and base off that passion and desire. So like if you're civil engineer, look up your go visit your structures if you can. But go find your find the favorite structure. Remember why that's your favorite structure, and then sell it to them. Because all oh my days, a lot of times I ask me that question: What's your favorite structure? And I always tell them my favorite structure. Anyways, so you want to like use the summer to like really build and build your your desire to study this degree. Because when it comes to interviews, they're gonna tell unless you're really good at like finessing your way. They're going to tell if someone cares about this degree, cares about this job application, cares about this route. Or they're just trying to get it for the money and they want people who are passionate, committed and determined to fully take this job role seriously. So you want to like spend the summer reading up on like different, because there's, there's a lot of outside academics that want to see stuff that you can do. So like volunteer, um, yeah, volunteer, do charitable work, go touring, traveling, looking at different types of things that will build your passion for your degree. Or like just like get experience outside university things that like you can talk to interviewers about like you know like those questions that don't actually specifically have anything to do with your degree but it has to do with your character and you need anecdotes is that the word an analogy for you to base that so you they can like they can see your character so like that's something I would heavily 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 suggest you do build up this experience build up those life a blind bag wait read up on scholarships and internships okay you might, you might be saying oh my gosh it's a bit too early i haven't even dabbled in the uni life yet okay you don't need to dabble in the uni life to really have a scholarship because before i even started this degree i came in okay and people already had scholarship that had a set plan for the whole four years of the master's degree and i was just thinking well <laughs> Next question, how did we even get here? Like, how did you even know about the scholarship? How did you know about this internship? How did you get six grand in a bursary? Like, blah, 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 blah. Read stuff an internship scholarship. There's actually loads out there for engineering and civil engineering. So if you just research it beforehand, you come in with a full on, this is me, this is it, I got a scholarship. I didn't do that, but I got my scholarship in second year. But like, you could, like, I know my quest, does like quest you apply in year 13 and then they'll tell you whether you got your scholarship October first year and so bef before you even like fully fledged into that like, first year you already have a scholarship and you have summer placement for first second third and fourth year and it's amazing so read up on internships and school. another thing you could do is that obviously by now is it by now when do you even get your a level results anyways when you do get your results and you know what uni you're going to you know what modules you're doing you might want to read on on the module description i'm not saying read on, on the module that's what uni is for like let's not we're overachievers but we're not that much of an overachiever okay read up on the modules and if you really 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 really, really, really want to you can even buy or see look at the recommended books because most modules will have a section in the on uh, the website about like recommended books like for me if i read up my recommended books for math i would have known that we have some fat math textbook that i could have read up because it's really actually easy to like do a couple stuff by yourself you don't actually really need lectures because once you get to uni you figure out that you teach most of it yourself <laughs> well, you can teach most of, most of the um, content by yourself. So look up at the modules, look up, look up at the recommended reading, because they'll always have the recommended reading. And most of the times they're really helpful, most of the times you don't actually read them. Values, all of that. Lastly, it's okay to do nothing. No stress, okay? Like, as I told you already, I didn't do anything about any of this, I'm telling you. Actually, I did a couple, but like, it was a little too late for me. It's only after I've done first year. I was like, oh, there's a couple things I could have done to help me to to make sure first year was smooth sailing. But it, if you didn't do it, it's calm. And so don't stress if you can't do anything. You know, just as I said, relax. Summer is all about relaxation. You've done your A levels. You've done your GCSE. You've done first, second year. Whatever whoever's watching this, you've done what you needed to do for the academic year. And it's time to relax and drink. It's time to go. Don't watch you watching. Anyways. Guys, I hope this video was useful and insightful. I hope that I clearly explained to you the things you could do, could, would, should do over summer. 
and I hope to see you in my next video. 